Greetings, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Um, I'm outside Guy Gibson's house. Uh, in case you don't know, Guy Gibson is best known for leading the Dam Busters raid uh, in the Second World War. So um, Guy Gibson was born in the United Kingdom in 1918. He grew up in a fairly well-off family. Uh, he went to St. Edward's School in Oxford, which is um, uh, perhaps strangely where Douglas Bader also went to, went to school. The, um, the star of Reach, uh, Reach for the Sky. Well, it's not actually in Reach for the Sky, but it's about him, an RAF pilot without any legs. Um, anyway, but uh, he was a bit younger than Douglas Bader, so I don't think they overlapped at school, Guy Gibson. Uh, anyway, he joined the Royal Air Force just before the Second World War broke out. And uh, he was very able, very hardworking, uh, and uh, blessed with her leadership qualities. So he's rapidly promoted. Of course, during the Battle of Britain and so on, so many RAF pilots were killed that there were there were a lot of vacancies so people could be promoted extra fast so they, they matured quickly because they had to take on such a heavy responsibility but he was someone who had plenty of gaiety to him he certainly believed in enjoying his free time and they were aware that they could be killed at, at any moment either in combat or just killed by um, uh, an air raid once they're on the ground um, anyway by 1943, the RAF was, was no longer in a defensive posture, could go on the attack against the Third Reich um, because uh, the Blitz was over and the Luftwaffe was not launching air raids over the United Kingdom anymore. The Luftwaffe had to do what it could to support um, the German army on the Eastern Front against the Soviet Union. Um, and um, the Allies were able to, to bomb Germany itself, not just German-occupied territories. Of course, by July 1943, the Allies had uh, landed in Italy, an air base in Italy to be, to be attacking there. Now, um, the, um, the Ruhr was a very industrialized area in Western Germany, and um, there are lots of dams there, hydroelectric dams to generate electricity for these factories. So um, the Allies are very keen to take out a lot of um, uh, German industry. The Germans had had many aircraft, anti-aircraft guns, searchlights and so forth. The Luftwaffe did not scramble at night time because um, a German uh, fighter could easily be mistaken for an Allied fighter and the Germans might end up accidentally shooting down their own plane. Um, they could too easily crash and well they could be they could be shot by the Allied ones. So at night they only use their anti-aircraft guns to to defend their um, industrial areas. Of course they had a blackout over there and um, they had millions of slave laborers from occupied countries. I do mean millions like two million from France alone Soviet prisoners of war as civilians, Polish people, um, and so forth. And then some people who'd moved there voluntarily um, as workers um, from various countries. And so a lot of these, so factories were bombed. There were often dormitories right beside the factories where the, where the workers lived. And sometimes these were destroyed and people were killed like that. So the idea was to destroy the factories themselves. But bombing was very crude in those days. There were no smart bombs. This is uh, two generations of technology prior to guided missiles. So you just open the bomb bay doors and push them out. Uh, so it was very rough and ready. You could miss by a mile quite easily. You know, dropping it, even if you could really perfectly identify the target, well, you couldn't night time even with a little bit of light um, the wind and uh, might move the bomb this way or that way so it wasn't going to hit exactly where you wanted you had to bomb the whole area and that's why huge numbers of civilians were killed we often forget this two million German civilians were killed in that war that's obviously many many millions of civilians of other nationalities the United Kingdom suffering only 60,000 civilian deaths got off actually very likely indeed I don't mean that in a disparaging way because I realize for someone if it's if it's your relative or your best friend has been killed that's a loss from which you may never recover anyway so how are they going to take out this industrial area of the of the Ruhr um, and um, the, the the dams well Barnes Wallace this government scientist he invented these bouncing bombs because you could drop a bomb and it goes straight to the bottom of the of the, of the lake and blow up and not really damage the, the, um, uh, the damage the dam um, just to produce a bit of a wave, might, maybe some, there might be a tidal wave over the dam, but it's not going to break the dam. You don't want to explode on impact when it hits the water, and you couldn't aim it so precisely that the bomb actually hits on the dam. The dam's not that wide, 10 meters or 20 meters wide. These, these, these bombs are dropping from that height, that'd be quite an altitude to try and stay as safe as possible from the ACAC, um, was only going to be accurate um, to within about one and a half kilometers, like I was saying. So invented bouncing bombs, which would bounce along the water, rubber-coated, would bounce and bounce until they hit something solid, like the, um, 
uh, like the dam itself and then they would sink to the bottom I'm not sure how they managed that one uh, and then blow up there to maximize the damage and ensure these things were destroyed and they tested them out on lakes in this country and eventually it went ahead so Guy Gibson was in command of that raid and uh, it was a tremendous success obviously destroyed the dam, no, no hydroelectricity, it was obviously a road across the dam and flooded a valley, so wrecked the factories, often de-housed some of the um, uh, industrial workers, um, and that was that. So Guy Gibson, he continued flying combat missions into 1944. It's quite a high abort rate from the US Army Air Corps, sometimes 30% of planes turned back citing technical trouble. Now sometimes they really did have technical trouble, but the US Army Air Corps suspected that some of the pilots were making excuses because they didn't wanna, they didn't wanna go on combat missions, there's quite a chance being killed. RAF did so as well, French Air Force, Polish Air Force, every Air Force did that. I'm not singling out the Americans. It's the only one statistic I happen to have heard. I don't know what the statistics were for other Air Forces. I don't have any reason to think it was particularly different from the other ones. Anyway, so Gibson carried on um, and uh, he was killed in a combat mission only a year later at the age of 25. So he was awarded a Victoria Cross for his uh, gallantry in um, his uh, missions over Germany. Yes, of course, I feel sorry for the German people killed, whether civilian or military. They're usually not particularly bad people, any more than citizens of allied countries were especially morally upstanding. But uh, that, that, that's him. So he's uh, memorialized in that film, um, uh, The Dam Busters, which came out about 10 years after he died with that tune. Um, I can't remember who composed that one. Dun, 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 da, da, dun, 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 and so forth. A black and white film, not so, not so well known now. And there's a famously Carling Black Label um, ad where some Briton uh, on holiday in Spain, no doubt, doesn't want the Germans to get the sun lounges and unfurls his Union flag um, towel and lets his Carling Black Label beer can hit the swimming pool and bounce and bounce and bounce onto the onto the sun lounger which was a rather trite tribute to guy gibson but was that chauvinistic was that distasteful uh likening this to the war and was it appealing to teutonophobic bigotry i notice outside this house they've actually got the european union flag so remain as it would seem is that ironic in in, in view of what what guy gibson did on the other hand or perhaps it's not because the european union is there to maintain the peace and obviously don't let's be beastly to the germans um so that, oh, after all the horrors of war, isn't it fantastic? We can be friends and cooperate with each other. That's supposed to be the spirit of the European Union. I'm not a believer in the EU myself, but I recognize it's not all bad. There you can see it behind me in the flower pot. Okay, that's enough about Guy Gibson.